For years, Huawei was seen by the US and its allies as a national security threat, not just a tech company. Concerns centered on the possibility that its telecom equipment could enable Chinese state espionage, a claim Huawei has always denied. These fears led to sweeping sanctions cutting Huawei off from critical American technology especially advanced semiconductors. By being placed on the entity list, Huawei was barred from buying chips from top manufacturers and using essential design software. The goal, cripple Huawei's ability to compete globally and slow China's tech rise. Initially the strategy worked. Huawei's smartphone business collapsed outside China, and its global brand suffered. Many believed the company would be permanently relegated to lower-end technology, unable to replicate the complex global supply chain. But instead of collapsing, Huawei pivoted. The company, with strong government backing, launched a secretive mission to rebuild its entire tech stack, free from Western dependencies. The sanctions, meant to be a cage, became a crucible. Huawei's response was not just about survival, but about forging true technological independence. If China was to be denied access to the global system, it would build its own. This was the start of a new era for both Huawei and China's tech ambitions. The world was about to witness a revolution in self-reliance. In chipmaking, the extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machine is the crown jewel, essential for producing the world's most advanced microchips. Only ASML in the Netherlands could build them, and US-led sanctions blocked China from acquiring this technology. Experts said it would take China at least a decade to catch up, if ever. But in late 2025, reports confirmed Huawei had secretly built and tested its own EUV machine in Dongguan. This was a direct challenge to one of the world's most protected technologies. The breakthrough stunned the industry, defying all Western forecasts. An ASML EUV machine is a $350 million marvel with over 100,000 specialized parts. How did China, cut off from global suppliers, achieve this so quickly? The answer, a national project codenamed with urgency aimed at breaking the tech blockade. Even if not yet ready for mass production the successful trial was a symbol of defiance and ingenuity. The impossible machine was now real, threatening to upend the global semiconductor balance. Huawei's EUV breakthrough was the result of a massive coordinated national effort. The Chinese government launched a wartime-level R&D push, pouring billions into the mission. Universities, state-owned giants, and private firms like Huawei and SMIC joined forces. Top scientists tackled physics and engineering challenges, while industrial giants built complex components. This parallel, centrally coordinated approach compressed a decade of R&D into just a few years. The government acted as the ultimate venture capitalist, absorbing risks and aligning all players. Unlike the West, China's model allowed for singular focus and rapid progress. The result, a domestic innovation ecosystem now rivaling the global one it was excluded from, the sanctions, meant as a barrier, became a catalyst for China's technological sovereignty. A new model for state-driven innovation was born. The biggest hurdle in building an EUV machine is the light source. ASML's system uses laser-produced plasma, firing a CO2 laser at molten tin droplets, an incredibly complex process. China didn't copy this, instead it developed a laser-induced discharge plasma LDP, system. This approach uses a laser to trigger an electrical discharge in gas, creating EUV-emitting plasma. The LDP system is simpler, smaller, and cheaper than ASML's, bypassing many proprietary components. If scalable, this could break the Western monopoly on advanced chip-making equipment. China aims for mass rollout by 2026, potentially producing 5 nemonier and even 3 nanometer chips. The world's chipmakers may soon have a second EUV supplier, reshaping the industry. But skepticism remains. Lab success doesn't guarantee commercial viability. Mass production demands high yields and reliability, still a major challenge. The world is watching to see if China's LDP machine can deliver at scale. Huawei's push for independence goes beyond hardware. It's about building a complete tech ecosystem. Harmony OS, Huawei's proprietary operating system, is central to this strategy. With Windows 10 support ending soon, Huawei is positioning Harmony OS as the alternative for millions, especially in non-Western markets. Backed by thousands of patents and a growing app library, Harmony OS is gaining traction for its performance and security. Its zero-trust architecture appeals to governments and corporations wary of Western software vulnerabilities. Adoption is accelerating across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Case in point, 
Asia-Pacific Bank saw a 47% drop in security incidents after switching to Harmony OS. Harmony OS is now a competitive product, not just a defensive measure. By building the entire tech stack, from chips to OS to apps, Huawei is creating a closed-loop self-sustaining sphere. This insulates it from future sanctions and challenges the dominance of Android, Windows and iOS. Huawei's vision, a multipolar tech world, with Harmony OS at its core. Beyond EUV, Huawei is making waves in satellite communications and AI hardware. The Mate 70 smartphone introduced true two-way global satellite messaging, thanks to China's Tiantong network. Users can send and receive messages anywhere on Earth, independent of cell towers. A game-changer for connectivity. This tech relies on custom chips and dynamic antennas, achieving near-instant communication. It's transforming industries from disaster response to logistics, providing resilience where it's needed most. In AI, Huawei developed the Ascend 910C chip, rivaling NVIDIA's best despite US export bans. Built on SMIC's 7 nanometer process, it delivers 780 teraflops of performance and has secured over $2 billion in orders. Chinese tech giants are adopting Ascend chips for AI model training, fueling a robust domestic market. This internal demand funds further R&D, creating a cycle of innovation. Huawei's resurgence now spans satellite, AI, and more, far beyond a single breakthrough. The company is redefining what's possible under sanctions. Its comeback is comprehensive, not just symbolic. Huawei's comeback is reshaping the global tech landscape, especially in developing nations. Its offerings provide a high-quality, affordable alternative to Western tech, reducing dependency on U.S. companies. In Africa, Kenya is adopting Huawei's satellite-first strategy, bypassing costly cell towers for instant nationwide coverage. This approach accelerates digital access and deepens China's tech partnerships worldwide. Huawei's smartphone shipments have rebounded, powered by its own chips and Harmony OS. The Asia-Pacific Bank's security gains are convincing other institutions to switch. Huawei's self-reliance is now a blueprint for others seeking independence from Silicon Valley. The era of uncontested Western tech dominance is ending faster than expected. A new multipolar order is emerging. Huawei's and China's tech advances have upended the U.S. strategy of containment. Sanctions, meant to halt China, instead accelerated its drive for independence. The West is now scrambling to respond as its leverage over critical tech erodes. Tighter sanctions may follow but their effectiveness is uncertain. China's dual approach, buying what it can, building what it can't, shows strategic sophistication. The risk of a split tech world with separate Western and Chinese stacks is growing. This decoupling could reshape everything from internet standards to global trade. Huawei's transformation is a national triumph, shifting the center of innovation eastward. The world is entering an era of fierce tech competition, with no guaranteed leaders. The new geopolitical chessboard is set, and the game for technological dominance has just begun.